Hi everyone, my name is S.H. Kim and this time I would like to share my experience of diagnosis of nutcracker phenomenon and nutcracker syndrome with Doppler to sound. This is a photograph of Dr. De Schepper, a Belgian radiologist who first used the term nutcracker syndrome in his historical article in 1972. This is a nut and a nutcracker simulating the mechanism of nutcracker phenomenon with a nut representing the left renal vein and two arms of the nutcracker representing abdominal aorta and superior mesenteric artery. The most typical symptom of the nutcracker syndrome is gross hematuria, but microscopic hematuria or proteinuria is more common. Water in the higher level naturally tries to flow down to the lower level. Likewise, left renal vein hypertension due to nutcracker nut phenomenon causes a development of various collateral vessels to transfer blood in the left renal vein across the midline to the right sided inferior venal cava. These collateral vessels may cause various symptoms not only left flank pain, but also back pain, shoulder pain, periumbilical, epigastric, pelvic, or even right-sided abdominal pain. Nutcracker phenomenon may be related to various orthostatic intolerance, such as orthostatic proteinuria, tachycardia, or dizziness in the standing posture. We need to be clear in using two terms, nutcracker phenomenon and nutcracker syndrome. Nutcracker phenomenon is just a phenomenon of compression of the left renal vein between the aorta and the superior ventric artery. And it is called nutcracker syndrome when nutcracker phenomenon is accompanied by the symptoms or signs such as hematuria, proteinuria, left flank pain or other related symptoms. Traditionally, the diagnosis of nutcracker syndrome depends on the pressure gradient of more than three millimeter mercury across the aorta mesenteric left renal vein, but it needs an invasive castration. I had a special interest in Doppler ultrasound diagnosis of nutcracker syndrome, and this is an article I published in 1996 in radiology. Normally there is a subtle compression of the left renal vein between the aorta and superior ventric artery and the normal flow velocity of the aorta ventric left renal vein is 40 to 50 centimeter per second, which is slightly higher than that of the hilar left renal vein 10 to 20 centimeters per second. If the peak flow velocity of aorta ventric left renal vein is more than 80 to 100 centimeters per second, which is twice the normal velocity of 40 to 50 centimeters per second, we may make a diagnosis of nutcracker phenomenon. If we calculate the theoretical pressure gradient from 80 to 100 centimeters per second velocity, Using this Bernoulli principle, the estimated gradient is between 2.3 to 3.8 millimeter mercury, which is quite equivalent to the 3 millimeter mercury pressure gradient criterion measured by catheterization. A 66 year old man with microscopic hematuria due to nutcracker syndrome. Color Doppler ultrasound well shows bright color jetting from the compressed aortomantic left renal vein, and the peak flow velocity was 143 centimeters per second. Then we can make a diagnosis of nutcracker syndrome without an invasive castration. A 36 year old man with proteinuria and fluctuating glomerular filtration rate due to severe nutcracker syndrome. 
aorta mesenteric left renal vein is tightly compressed between the aorta and superior mesenteric artery with a peak flow velocity of 182 centimeter per second. Absent flow signals in the dilated hilar lateral renal vein indicate stagnant flow. In severe nutcracker syndrome, like this patient, glomerular filtration rate can be fluctuating between the morning and evening. A 30-year-old woman with a proteinuria and left pelvic discomfort. And the ultrasound shows compression of the aorta mental left renal vein and dilated hilar left renal vein with the absent flow signals indicating stagnant flow, stagnant flow. The longitudinal ultrasound in the right paracetal plane shows dilated gonadal veins and transverse ultrasound of the uterus shows left-sided pelvic congestion. So this is a patient who has both nutcracker syndrome and pelvic congestion syndrome. Nutcracker syndrome is known as a rare disease and is registered in the NIH and orphanage sites in the United States. But several articles reported that Nutcracker syndrome is probably not as rare as it has been known. And my personal opinion, based on my experience, is that Nutcracker phenomenon is very common and Nutcracker syndrome is also quite common. I reported my experience regarding the prevalence of nutcracker phenomenon and nutcracker syndrome in 2020 uh, annual congress of the Korean Society of Ultrasound and Medicine and among the 1,223 patients examined with Doppler ultrasound in my K radiology clinic for one year, 372 patients which is approximately 30% were found to have nutcracker phenomenon. And 184 of the 372 patients, approximately 50% of those patients with nutcracker phenomenon could be diagnosed as nutcracker syndrome. This is a 28-year-old woman who was found to have a proteinuria for 20 years. So from the childhood, she heard that her kidney may have some problems of unknown cause. She visited my clinic and the ultrasound was done and grayscale ultrasound shows narrowing of the aorta mental left renal vein and the color Doppler ultrasound well shows the jetting of the bright colored flow from the narrowed aorta mesenteric left renal vein and peak flow velocity was 147. And the diagnosis of nutcracker syndrome was made and she belongs to uh, this area of this diagram, nutcracker syndrome with proteinuria. Another nutcracker syndrome patient with intermittent left flank pain. And ultrasound images show similar findings of the narrowing of the aorta mental left renal vein and bright colored high velocity flow with a peak flow velocity 220. She belongs to this area of nutcracker syndrome with left flank pain. The typical pattern of nutcracker phenomenon is the left renal vein compression in the narrow space between the aorta and the superior mesenteric artery, but there are other patterns of left renal vein compression as well. One of them is this pattern in an asymptomatic woman. If you look at the left renal vein carefully, you may notice that left renal vein is not compressed between the aorta and superior mesenteric artery but is compressed posteriorly by the origin of the right renal artery and peak flow velocity was 114. 
So the pattern of lateral renal vein compression in this patient is like this schema. Another pattern of lateral renal vein compression is this pattern in, an, in this asymptomatic uh, man. In this patient, the space between the aorta and superior ventral artery is wide and there is no compression by the right renal artery, but the left renal vein is stretched of the, the abdominal aorta like this schema. And the peak flow velocity was 168 cm per second. So we may say that there are at least three types of nut critical phenomenon. Type 1, compression of the left renal vein between the aorta and superior ventral artery. And type 2, compression by the origin of the right renal artery. And type 3, left renal vein stretched over the abdominal aorta. Also, there are combinations of those types, and this is an example, 25-year-old asymptomatic man. In this patient, the left renal vein is slightly compressed between the aorta and superior ventral artery, and also posteriorly by the origin of the right renal artery. Peak flow velocity uh, in this area, in this area, was 147, while peak flow velocity in this area, in this area, was 250. So we may say that the pattern of left renal vein compression in this patient will be a combination of type 1 and type 2 nut crackers. Now I would like to talk about the postural variations of nut cracker phenomenon. This Doppler ultrasound evaluation with changes in the patient's postures is a unique advantage of ultrasound over other imaging modalities like CT or MRI. A 25-year-old woman with microscopic hematuria, proteinuria, and left flank pain due to Nutcracker syndrome. In supine posture, typical type 1 nutcracker with flow jetting from the narrow aortomesentric left renal vein. When the patient has a left lateral decubitus posture, superior mesentric artery moves to the left side and left renal vein compression is relieved and peak flow velocity was also decreased to 51.7 cm per second, a normal value. And when the patient takes right lateral decubitus posture, superior artery comes back to the pre-aortic location and the left renal vein is again tightly compressed between the aorta and the superior artery and peak peak flow velocity was 220. She told me that her usual, sli usual sleeping posture was right lateral decubitus, and I explained to the patient about nutcracker syndrome and the changes of Doppler ultrasound findings in different postures and recommended to change her sleeping posture from right lateral decubitus to left lateral decubitus. And she came back to my clinic one week later with a bright smiling face and told me that her left flank pain disappeared. This case well illustrates the ability of a well-performed Doppler ultrasound examinations in the diagnosis and management of the patients with Nutcracker syndrome. Another similar patient, a 60-year-old woman with microscopic hematuria and low abdominal pain due to Nutcracker syndrome. Doppler ultrasound shows a similar difference, a movement of the superior artery and similar difference of the left renal vein compression according to the patient's postural changes and her best sleeping posture will be 
left lateral decubitus. But this 32-year-old woman with proteinuria due to nutcracker syndrome is different. The movement of the mesenteric root containing superior mesenteric artery is quite limited and the degree of compression of left renal vein is also similar in supine left lateral decubitus and right lateral decubitus postures with a similar peak flow, peak flow velocity 177, 132, and 178. Based on these Doppler ultrasound findings, we may suspect that there are some adhesions or fixation in the mesenteric root containing superior mesenteric artery, and we may expect changes of the slipping posture only will not be effective for the management of this patient. Lastly, I would like to mention a few technical aspects we need to keep in mind when we are doing the upper ultrasound for the critical phenomenon. The first two points are Doppler angle and sample volume. Because the direction of the aortomesentic left renal vein is almost perpendicular to the ultrasound beam in neutral position of the ultrasound transducer in patient with a supine posture, we need to rotate the transducer counterclockwise to make the Doppler angle better. And we need to use a thick sample volume to include the left renal vein between the pulsating aorta and superior artery. In the spectral Doppler ultrasound image, the sample volume is located in the left aspect of the imaging field because the transducer was rotated counterclockwise and we may get clear Doppler spectra because the sample volume is wide enough, 10 millimeter in this case. Another technical point to keep in mind is not to put manual compression to the left renal vein through the transducer. In this grayscale ultrasound, the aortomesentric space is not narrow and the left renal vein may be compressed slightly by the right renal artery. And peak flow velocity at spectral Doppler ultrasound was 170 centimeter per second, which is much higher than the 100 centimeter per second criterion. But when we try not to put manual pressure on the transducer, the peak flow velocity was decreased to 95 and 61. So probably 61.6 centimeter per second is a true peak flow velocity in this case. So absent not critical phenomenon and the CT images of this patient show no evidence of left renal vein compression. Another example showing the compression effect by the transducer in a 69 year old woman with epigastric pain, probably due to nutcracker syndrome and peak flow velocity without manual compression was 189, but with manual compression, it was 324, a big difference. You may see the difference in the flow signals in the hyla left renal vein and absent flow signals of the hyla left, left renal vein when you put manual compression. So please remember that when you put manual compression to see the left renal vein more clearly, it may cause a false positive diagnosis of nutcracker. And the last technical point is not to ask the, ask the patient too much to hold his or her breath to get clear continuous Doppler spectra. With a quiet, com comfortable respiration, usually we may get clear enough Doppler spectra fluctuating with the patient's respiration 
and it will be easier both to the patients and the examiners to measure the peak flow velocity while patients are keeping quiet, comfortable respiration. In this patient, the velocity at inspiration is around 100 and that an expiration is around 200 and the maximum peak flow velocity was 221 centimeter per second. In this talk, I explained how we can use Doppler ultrasound in the diagnosis of nutcracker phenomenon and nutcracker syndrome, and also shared my experience about various patterns of nutcracker phenomenon, postural variations, and a few technical tips. Thank you for joining this talk. And if you have any questions or comments, please email me.